Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, April 9th, uh, 2018. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide o canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free o canada we stand on guard for thee o canada we stand on guard for thee Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to uh, uh, alumni of our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Um, before we uh, start our meeting and the adoption of previous council meeting minutes, I just wanted to make a brief acknowledgement of the uh, tragedy in Saskatchewan with the Humboldt Broncos uh, hockey team. Um, our community and many communities across Canada obviously uh, stand in solidarity with uh, not just the residents in the community of Humboldt, uh, but also with the families and uh, the lives that were impacted by this tragedy. I uh, just ask uh, if everyone in attendance tonight would join me in uh, taking a brief moment of silence before we start our council meeting. Thank you, everyone. So we'll move on uh, to the adoption of our previous council meeting minutes. I have a motion for that set of minutes from March 26th. Councillor Minhas. Thank you, Mayor Will Given. I move the council approve the agenda, approve the minutes of the city council meeting held Monday, March 26, 2018, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Anything that we need to correct before we formally adopt them? Seeing nothing, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and then I'd look for a motion to adopt the Joint City County Council meeting minutes. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, I would move that Council approve the minutes of the City Council Joint Council meeting held Monday, March 26, 2018, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, that brings us to the adoption of the agenda. Were there any items that we needed to uh, amend on our agenda? If not, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'd move that Council adopt the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Again, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries as well, and that brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for anyone in the community to come and address council on any community-related matter, so long as it isn't the subject of a public hearing, uh, which I don't think we have any of those this evening anyhow. Uh, we had a couple of delegations let us know ahead of time that they uh, wish to be here, and the first was John McDonald with respect to uh, safe consumption site and mobile location guidelines. Mr. McDonald, are you here this evening? Yeah, if you'd like to, if you'd like to come forward, uh, you don't need to introduce yourself because we've got that in the record. Thanks for letting us know in advance that you'd be here, but welcome. Uh, if you'll just take the uh, presenter's table there and make sure one of the microphones is kind of pointed towards you, uh, we're happy to hear from you. Welcome. Uh, thanks for letting me speak tonight. Um, so what I'm here to talk about, or what I asked to come and talk about, um, was locations of safe consumption sites uh, in town here. Um, I'm a father of two young kids, and 
uh, I have a responsibility to them. Um, that includes questioning the location of a service, like a safe consumption site that's near our home, uh, and what that means for my family's safety. <clears throat> so, saying that, in the past week, uh, I've had a chance to learn quite a bit about the service uh, and the predicted impact that it's going to have on the, our community. Um, I gained some insight into why uh, why they're choosing a method that uh, allows them to get into operation quickly. Um, and combined with that information, uh, uh, combine that information with the specific locations they're going to operate in, or where I understand they're they're going to operate in at this point, um, I feel my immediate concerns have been addressed uh, right now. Um, I recognize there's problems faced by uh, by intravenous drug users in our community, and uh, I can't speak to the the merits of a safe consumption site. I don't know. Uh, much about that, but I can appreciate the intention of everybody standing behind it. Um, my understanding is that HIV North is going to continue to work with the city um, moving forward, especially on future locations and their permanent location as far as uh, interviewing other stakeholders like the adjacent land users and that uh, those concerns aren't going to be ignored. Um, so in contrast to the action that I've written um, when I applied to speak here, um, I, I won't be advocating for bylaws to be enacted prior to them uh, operating their mobile site. Um, I think that the problem that they're addressing um, has enough hurdles for them to manage at this point um, that I don't believe that, that further burdens need to be imposed on them uh, for them to operate responsibly. Um, it's not to say that we need to ignore any of these things or ignore the bylaws in the future, but I think that for the time being to get them operating um, you know, I, I'm not going to, to uh, stand in their way. So uh, that's all I have to say. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen. Sure, absolutely. We do. We create an opportunity for council members to ask questions if they want. We, you know, you come and get to, you have a few sure. minutes, and then if council members have any questions, we'll just sort of offer that opportunity. Uh, and I see <coughs> Councillor Bressy has a question. Well, uh, well, thank you, Mr. McDonald, for coming here. I appreciate it. And we've had conversations about this in the past. And I'm just kind of curious if you got a sense of where your neighbors are at with this and if they're feeling similar to you? Um, I don't know that, that they are for sure. I think that uh, um, a lot of our concern is based around uh, uh, we're not sure about what's going to happen in the future so that there's there's locations that have been loosely defined but they're not, um, there's not necessarily any bylaws right now to, like there's no enforcement for us to say that if they chose to relocate somewhere else, we don't really have any means to to do anything about it so I don't think that that fear is gone uh, we we still are concerned about that especially because I you know in the the research that I found there's lots of benefits I think to that that service to that to first of all to the community in general um, and of course to the users of that service but I think in the immediate vicinity I suspect it's it's fairly fair for us to say that there's probably going to be some consequence there um, not necessarily positive. So I, I think that my neighbors are still a bit concerned that, that possibly we would see uh, that site in, in our location. I know that I am, and, and I do know that uh, I've spoke to a couple of, of them tonight who are concerned about that specifically. But uh, Any other questions for the delegation? Uh, I, would, I guess I would just say, uh, Mr. McDonald, I appreciate you being here this evening. I appreciate the fact that when you, it sounds as though you've done some of your own research sort of proactively since you booked the time to come and speak to council. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you have a, a really balanced perspective on this that uh, advises caution uh, but is open to the possibilities. Um, I guess if I can relate uh, on behalf of the city, uh, our intent is to work closely with HIV North to ensure that the process that they develop is robust and that residents like you and your neighbours get uh, the notification that you need and the input that you should deserve to have. Um, and uh, I would hope that you continue to stay engaged and make sure that from a process perspective that it meets your expectations. Um, and so absolutely look for opportunities to stay engaged, but thanks so much for um, seeking out information proactively and, and making sure that you're informed. Much appreciated. Thanks again. Okay. Um, the next uh, was uh, Alan Ruffneg. Alan, are you here? Yeah. Mr. Ruffneg, if you'd like to come forward. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I probably didn't get your last name exactly right. My apologies, but if uh, you more than welcome to correct me um, and welcome. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, Rufian is my last name. Thank you. I live on 99 Avenue. I was here last fall in concerns with 
parking congestion in that area. Uh, council was supposed to get back to me on a recommendation or their findings, but nobody ever did. So in the meantime, I went to the law office and I dealt with it and I'm happy with the outcome. But lately I've seen uh, an increase in permits being given to residents of the apartment. And I'm wondering why that is, why those residents should have street parking when they have their own parking lot. In that area, right off of 100th Street where I live, they all park in that first quarter of the block. So that's the issue. There's got to be a certain number of permits should be allotted for certain square footage or whatever. Like the last snowfall after the grader come by, one of those residents left his vehicle on the street. So now you got an extra pile of snow in the middle of the street where nobody parks, so it moves parking up farther. So that's the question is why they're given permits to people that live in that apartment. Okay, so the question, uh, I remember when you made the presentation last time about the law office, and so the question this time is more specifically around the uh, how permits are dedicated to the apartment building that's on the same street. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure if we have that information at hand uh, today, uh, but that's the nature of your concern, and so uh, as you might know, uh, towards the end of our meeting is actually where we deal with um, uh, um, delegation business. Uh, and I will personally follow up with you uh, if you don't stick around for the conclusion of the meeting to hear sort of where it goes, um, but I'll make sure that I personally follow up you, with you with some information. I have another concern in that area as well, if I could bring that forward. Sure, absolutely. So there's a walkway, uh, crosswalk lights at 105th Street and then lights on 108th Street, and we live in between that. So in the summertime, it gets very noisy, and... I thought we had a noise bylaw, but I have seen no no uh, buddy controlling noise, or especially the motorbikes and uh, these diesel trucks with straight pipes. It seems to be getting worse every year. But okay, okay. So the question is uh, concerns around noise. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else that you wanted to bring forward to council? Well, I guess if I got one other one. 108th Street, all the truck traffic. How many more years are we going to have that truck traffic through town? 108th Street through the bypass. All those trucks coming from the south are loaded with mud. And where do they deposit it? Right down that alley. And uh, any newcomers to town, I don't think they would think this as much of a tourist area when they'd see that. Okay, thanks very much for your presentation this evening. Thanks for being here, and I'll make sure that I follow up with you directly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Was there anybody else that wished to present to Council? Uh, you don't have to let us know ahead of time that you're coming, but we always appreciate it. Uh, was there anybody else that wished to come forward to pre present to Council with any community-related matter, any matter that's on our Council agenda this evening? Okay. Seeing nobody else coming forward, uh, then we will close the delegation portion of our agenda. Uh, we have no public hearings, uh, as I said before. Um, no items of unfinished business. So that takes us to item number eight, reports, and 8.1. Um, and I will look to uh, council to uh, uh, introduce or make a motion uh, with respect to bylaw C-1248A, the Intermunicipal Development Plan, technical amendments. I'd look for a motion for second reading. Councillor Ressi. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we give second reading to bylaw C-1248A, being an amendment to the Intermunicipal Development Plan. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressey. So open for discussion and debate. Uh, any questions, comments, uh, discussion or debate? Councilor Thiessen, I see you in the queue. Are you with the questions? I'll just relate that this was uh, uh, arises as a result of the Joint City County council meeting uh, that we passed the minutes for previously. Um, the first reading happened uh, at our, at our uh, regular city council meeting uh, and then we jointly um, uh, got together with the county to discuss. Uh, Councillor Palat. Thanks Mayor Kevin. Um, it's not regarding this motion specifically. I guess I just wanted to make sure I didn't get out a cue on uh, a motion I'd like to make around this. Okay. So just sort of business arising? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks very much. I will make sure not to uh, go past. Okay, so if there isn't any other discussion or debate on the technical amendments being proposed to the Intermunicipal Development Plan, I will call for the vote. Please vote. 
Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we give third reading to bylaw C1248A, being an amendment to the Intermunicipal Development Plan. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on uh, third and final reading? I guess we didn't give it an introduction here this evening necessarily, but just for anybody that might be watching, the technical amendments generally uh, are of the nature of recognizing that the city of Grand Prairie has actually annexed uh, an area, and so the maps in the plan are actually outdated. So essentially recognizes the new city boundary as it, as it exists today. Uh, the plan hadn't been updated since 2010, and uh, in its sort of existing form, unless we pass these changes, uh, it wouldn't recognize the city's current boundaries. So the nature of the amendments was really that of Updating the uh, updating the maps and a few other minor technical points. Uh, if there's no other discussion or debate, I'll call for the vote on third reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, uh, and I guess that uh, brings me back to you, Councillor Pallad. I said I wouldn't miss you, and I and I haven't. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I, I can appreciate that we did uh, these motions, and it's more out of respect for um, some technical changes on this, but I. I just want to make sure, I guess my intent with the, the motion vote to make is to make sure that we don't miss um, maybe some more conversation that we should be having about other changes that aren't ne necessarily technical in nature. So I'll, I'll try this motion here. Of, uh, I'd like to direct the mayor right the county of Grand Prairie requesting the initiation of a con comprehensive review of the IDP. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. That motion would be in order. Um, I'll just say that I would uh, support the motion. I think uh, the technical amendments are w sort of the bare minimum to recognize the actual you know, city boundary. Um, but the plan does say that it was supposed to be reviewed every three years, uh, has not had a comprehensive review since, uh, since its adoption back in 2010. Um, so it's obviously well overdue. And we've also had significant changes to the Municipal Government Act uh, since the uh, plan was adopted. There are some new requirements for intermunicipal development plans. So those are all probably uh, those and others, I'm sure, are some, some useful reasons to initiate a, a more comprehensive dialogue with the county about the IDP. Okay. Any other discussion or debate, questions or comments on Councillor Plot's motion? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And that'll bring us to item 8.2, Development Permit PL160252, Paving and Landscaping Amendments in the DC 14 District. Um, this is where Council technically changes hats. Uh, we're now acting as the Development Authority for the Municipality, which we don't always do. Uh, typically that's handled at a committee meeting. Um, and so this process, I'm sure there's something that I'll mess up as we go through this process, just <laughs> uh, because we don't do it all the time here. Um, but I'm going to look first to administration for an introduction. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor Given and members of council. For those people watching tonight on our YouTube channel, I'm Matt Hulse, Development Officer 2 at the city. And we're here tonight for uh, this development permit for the Cairn. Uh, and I th believe we know the history of this property quite well, but uh, just to refresh everybody, the location of the property is shown in the uh, pictures on the uh, top of the slide here and the property zone DC 14 and council is the sole development authority for this district To give you a little bit of a uh, background uh, Information on this development permit uh, the, the developer unfortunately was unable to complete the required paving and landscaping works uh, so upon the developers request uh, council granted an extension in 2016 and uh, that extension that was granted in 2016, uh, the date had passed and the paving and landscaping works uh, were still not completed. So a second extension uh, was requested. However, this time it was requested until September 30th, 2022. Um, the applicant also requested a reduction uh, in the number of parking stalls. Uh, so after a lengthy discussion at that council meeting, council kind of more or less took a time out and referred the development permit to a council committee of the whole for a further discussion to uh, hone in on some of the issues uh, that 
are really the meat of this uh, development permit. So the council committee of the whole meeting was held on February 6th of this year. And <clears throat> uh, four issues in particular were discussed at that uh, meeting. Uh, one was a review of the proposed sanctions uh, for non-compliance, the possibility of a time extension of up to five years for the completion of the paving, the completion of the landscaping by uh, this coming July, and uh, justification for the number of required parking stalls at the Cairn. Uh, the Council Committee of the Whole, or CCW as we call it, made four motions uh, that's are specific to this development permit. Uh, committee recommended a fine, uh, the committee recommended council issue a fine of $250 for the non-compliance of this development permit. Uh, the fine has been issued and de delivered to the applicant and landowner and uh, have uh, received confirmation that that fine was actually paid on uh, March 20th. Uh, the committee also directed administration to amend the development permit to require landscaping improvements and protective paid curbing around the landscaped areas to be completed by no later than July 31st of 2018. So in that regard, uh, we have proposed conditions uh, 10 and 13 uh, that the developer uh, provides nine trees and protective paid curbing adjacent to the landscaping areas uh, along 105th Avenue to be uh, completed by no later than July 31st. And the developer is also required to provide uh, four trees um, and protective paid curbing um, by no later than the same date, July 31st of 2018. Uh, there's also conditions 11 and 12. Uh, condition 11 is that uh, the developer is responsible for the landscaping of the city boulevard up to the uh, curb line of the road. And that's the typical condition for uh, all commercial um, or large residential development permits, such as for the Cairn. The developer uh, should also enter into a landscaping agreement with the uh, city of Grand Prairie regarding the uh, professional installation and protective uh, pay, protective uh, poured curbing adjacent to the landscaping and uh, maintenance of the landscaping for two years following uh, installation. Another motion was regarding uh, paving. Uh, committee, uh, committee of the Whole directed administration to amend the development permit uh, to extend the deadline for the completion of paving. Uh, by no later than uh, July 31st of 2019. And this this is the paving and the line painting. Uh, the curbing, of course, is in the, with the landscaping that I referred to earlier. Uh, the paving and the line, line painting, uh, as I said, is completed by uh, July 31st of 2019. Also, uh, Included is conditions four and seven. Uh, the uh, number of parking stalls remains at 69 parking stalls, uh, which includes the uh, parking stalls for the existing parking lot on 104th Avenue and the parking stalls for this new parking lot on 105th Avenue. And the developer and owner uh, is required to, as per our amended development permit, to enter into a uh, paving agreement with the city uh, that requires the completion of paving by no later than July 31st of 2019. Uh, regarding securities, uh, committee also directed administration to amend the development permit to include a condition uh, for the submission of securities for the landscaping. Uh, in this regard, we note that the motion is limited to uh, landscaping securities. However, we do recommend that the cost of the paved curbing is also included in uh, in these securities, as the curbing would protect uh, the landscaping uh, from damage caused by vehicles. So the landscaping securities uh, were determined uh, 
using quotes from reputable landscaping companies uh, in in around the city. The uh, quotes uh, which are available in your agenda packages include the installation of 13 trees, uh, preparation of just over 4,000 square feet or 379 square meters in landscaped area, uh, maintenance of the landscaping for two years following installation, and this includes weekly watering, inspection for diseases, uh, corrective uh, pruning, and, uh, and so on. The average uh, of the landscaping quotes is $21,998. For the securities, uh, the poured curbing was based on a per linear uh, price for the poured curbing. The per linear uh, curbing or price uh, multiplied by the dimensions of the parking lot, uh, 10127 uh, and 10131105 Avenue, came to $12,301. The total of the average landscaping securities and the poor curbing securities is $34,299. Uh, council may choose to require the full amount of these securities, uh, percentage of these securities, uh, or no securities at all. Uh, administration does rec recognize uh, that the usual template uh, for the development permit conditions uh, that require the securities was used in the preparation of this draft development permit for tonight's council meeting. Uh, so on, on, on top of that, we also recommend that uh, condition, night, condition 14 of this draft development permit is amended uh, to require the securities to be submitted by a specified date. Uh, that specified date that we recommend is May 31st of 2018. Uh, the completion of the landscaping works uh, again is July 31st of 2018. So there's about, it was roughly two months uh, that we would have the securities before the landscaping work is completed. Uh, we received a uh, alternate uh, parking lot design uh, prior to tonight's council meeting. Uh, so this is the alternate design uh, pictured here. We did have questions about what is uh, proposed in this uh, blank area here. And I uh, since colored it green. The um, applicant has indicated um, that uh, his plans include a community garden uh, in this area. Um, just to give you uh, a comparison for comparison purposes, this is the uh, alternate design. This is the um, approved parking lot design on this slide. And then I have the slide, uh, both designs side by side. The 105th Avenue is in a different uh, direction on uh, on each of the slides. So the one on the right for the alternate plan is turned sideways. So 105th Avenue uh, faces the same way um, on this slide, on this side by side comparison. But I'll just um, just summarize the uh, the changes. The approved design has an entrance off of 105th Avenue uh, here. The alternate design takes that uh, entrance out and moves it off the laneway uh, that runs between 104th Avenue and 105th Avenue. And then uh, in place of the entrance that is now taken out, uh, that area would be landscaped and then there would be a little bit, uh, a little bit more landscaping uh, here, which would be the community garden. Uh, administration does prefer the um, alternate design um, in principle that the applicant has submitted. And uh, our reasons for that is the, the elimination of the access onto 105th Avenue. Uh, there is also an inclusion of additional amenity space, uh, that being the community garden for residents. Uh, there is less area eventually to be uh, asphalt and concrete, so that would equal less runoff. Um, 
Although this plan might result in additional landscaping costs, the paving costs we believe would uh, be would likely be less, and there would also be no uh, need for driveway access constructed to city road standards, and that's a pretty big expense. So uh, that would be less cost overall, and uh, something that's less cost overall is something that is more uh, palatable for the applicant, and we believe that's more likely uh, something wouldn't get done with this alternate parking lot design. However, we do note, um, and this is why we support it in principle, uh, if this plan is supported, we recognize that this plan will require the removal of two parking spaces. Uh, and I'll, I'll point that out here because as you can see with these four trees in the easterly portion of the parking lot, uh, the branches for those trees would encroach over these two parking spaces here and then the drive aisle between the two parking spaces. So if council chooses the alternate plan, then we would have to slightly amend the conditions uh, to require 67 parking stalls and 60, in, instead of 69 parking stalls. Uh, council may choose to stay with the current plan for park, for the parking lot or uh, opt for the alternate alternate plan. If the alternate plan is chosen, the development permit uh, conditions and the schedules will be amended accordingly to reflect the new plan. Uh, for stakeholder engagement, uh, in advance of tonight's uh, council meeting, notices were sent to adjacent landowners, uh, persons who submitted a letter of concern, uh, signed a petition or attended a previous council meeting or committee meeting for this development permit. Uh, this is similar to the stakeholder engagement measures uh, taken prior to uh, all meetings regarding this uh, development permit. So to conclude, uh, we recommend, or administration recommends that council amend this um, development permit uh, to require landscaping improvements and protective poured curbing around the landscaping areas to be completed by no later than July 31st of 2018. Extend the deadline for the completion of paving as specified in the current development permit to no later than July 31st of 2019. Include a condition for the submission of securities for landscaping effective in 2018, specifically uh, May 31st, 2018. And um, uh, lastly, council may choose to uh, stay with the current parking lot design or choose the alternate parking lot design. Um, however, the, uh, the parking stalls would have to be uh, slightly reduced by two spaces if the alternate design is chosen. And if the alternate design is chosen, then the uh, development permit conditions and the schedules of the development permit will be amended to reflect the uh, new design. And uh, that concludes my presentation. Um, we're open for discussion, comments, and questions. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Ellis. I see. Uh, so we'll have uh, an opportunity for questions for administration, and we'll end up coming back around. Uh, we'll have uh, delegations that present uh, in support or in opposition have an opportunity for questions from them, then finally we'll close with an opportunity for any closing questions we might have for management. Uh, Councillor Palat. Uh, thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, just a question for administration, maybe just for me to, to clarify, uh, if I'm understanding this properly. So when we do the landscaping securities and the paving securities, it would be 100% of the amount. Um, and once the work's completed, 50% would be released uh, upon completion and the rest two years later. Is that correct? or? Mr. Ellis? Through uh, Mayor Given, uh, to answer uh, Councillor Pilat's uh, question, uh, with the uh, paving securities, uh, the, the securities are typically um, released once the work is done and satisfactorily completed. With the landscaping securities, uh, the securities are typically released uh, by 80% when the work is complete, or sorry, 60% when the work is completed, and the remaining 40% is released after two years. Uh, this is kind of a special development permit, and Council is the development authority, so Council can release the securities 
by every timeline it sees fit. Um, but but that that's how it's typically done. Uh, regarding the amount, of course, again, we can uh, require the full amount, a percentage of that amount, or of, of course, none at all. Councillor Platts. Yeah, further? just a follow-up question on that then, just looking at uh, the quotes that we received, um, one of them had um, two-year maintenance basically in the quote, so um, I'm just kind of getting a gut feeling that we're, we're asking to put up security for something that's already kind of been built into one of the quotes, but that's, uh, is that normal in, in, in a process like this where when we receive a quote it would have um, the maintenance period built right into it as well? Or Mr. Wright? Uh, given Councillor Platt, um, <coughs> sorry, just to clarify, um, the maintenance period is focused on the landscaping that um, Council's looking at, so that is typical to have a two-year maintenance period um, to make sure that trees, um, shrubs survive. The reference to the paving, this is, the quote is on just the concrete curbing as the actual sort of securities and not on the whole paving area. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Given. Uh, just a question about the uh, security amounts. Uh, if we were to go with the, uh, the new design, um, which presumably is going to cost less money, would be adjust, we'd be adjusting the security amounts that we require? Thank you. Mr. Ellis? Uh, through Mayor Given, um, yes, we, we would have to uh, get a quote for the new design. Our quotes were only based on the current design, uh, but the new design would presumably result in less securities. And that could be a technical amendment. It wouldn't change the essence of this development permit, so we can uh, do that more or less like in-house. Uh, we wouldn't have to come back to another council meeting. Sure, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Blackburn. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I've got two questions. Just as I'm asking my first one, is it possible to get the it, the alternate plan up on the screen again? I just want to check one thing before I ask that question. Well, um, and then just go before I ask a question about that, just going back to securities, I'm curious, what are... Oh, do we have any land use bylaw provisions that let us, if we don't take securities in the trees, die in one year that allow us to make sure they get replanted again? Or if we take two year securities and then this gets paved in a year and they actually die three years from now because of that to force those trees getting planted again? I'm just trying to figure out besides securities, do we have any mechanisms to make sure trees survive in this area? Mr. Wright? May I give in Councillor Bressy? Um, the, the standard process is the two-year maintenance period. So then if they do die beyond then, typically we're not following up as administration or the city to say, okay, you've got to replant them because after two years, the expectation that they are settled and going to survive. And is that just because that's not a usual practice or because we don't have any mechanisms in the land use by law to do so if we so desire? Maggie and um, Councillor Bressy, exactly. That's just always been the practice for the two-year period. So do we have mechanisms in the land use by law if we did want to follow up, if we wanted to go against our usual practice? Um, Mayor Given, um, Councillor Bressy, we could certainly bring something forward to Council to look at an amendment to the land use by law, um, thinking that um, the site plan has been approved or the landscaping plan with these trees. It's just that it's always been the two-year maintenance, but it certainly could be justified to say that we could go back if we had provision in the land use bylaw after two years to basically say, look, if the trees have died, you have to replant. Thank you. And then a uh, question on a different topic. I noticed on the alternate plan that is washed rock instead of a grass area. Is there an administrative opinion on why we'd require grass in the development permit and if one's preferable to the other? Mr. Ellis? Through Mayor Given, uh, grass is certainly uh, preferred. Um, the washed rock, rock isn't ideal, but uh, we did um, seek the input from uh, Parks Operations uh, and they can uh, live with uh, the washed rock. Um, provided that the trees are uh, 
are, are planted in um, sufficient mulched planting beds that are large enough and deep enough and uh, that everything is professionally installed. And the, the uh, landscaping company that installs the trees would make sure that happens. Thank you. And what's the reason for, for preferring grass? Uh, grass typically uh, retains water um, a lot better than rock. Um, water is obviously just simply evaporates off the rock and then the rock uh, heats up around the trees. So if the mulch planting beds aren't, um, aren't big enough, then it basically creates like an oven, like a environment around the trees and then that just dries the water out even more. But those concerns can be larger than mitigated if the sufficient uh, mulch beds are provided around the base of the tree. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressi. I don't see anybody else in the queue with any questions for administration at this point. So I would ask if there's anyone here to speak in uh, support or speak to the development uh, uh, development permit PL160252. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this matter? Mr. Cameron, if you'd like to come forward. Given in council uh, for another opportunity to speak with you. Um, I'm largely in agreement with everything that uh, Matt has shared. Uh, in particular, the um, alternate plan. I, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it or if it's easy for him to bring his back. It's a little more colorful than mine. Um, I, I do. I listened to what some of the surrounding residents had said, and the um, one of their concerns was that additional access onto 105th Ave. So um, we actually worked to see if we could reconfigure it. Um, so this this is what we came up with to um, help avoid that. I also think um, that band of uh, landscaping is going to look better, be more appealing, um, and then. Uh, not sure if it would ever happen, but in the case of future development, uh, this parking lot layout uh, would be better suited for that also. Um, to speak to a couple of the other things, um, it sounds like securities is one of your concerns. I'd like to point out that uh, as part of affordable housing, um, council has the ability to waive securities and they did do that on the original Cairn project and um, everything was completed before anybody moved in. There was never never a concern. Our trees are thriving. We have washed rock all around them. I, I think it looks quite good. Um, uh, Cairn is literally a pile of rocks, so that you know it kind of fits with our with our theme there. Um, so I, I I sort of question the need for securities. Uh, I would suggest we even exceeded um, what would have been required. We have a number of flower planters. We have uh, quite a nice bicycle storage, uh, custom uh, smoking area. We provided rubber mulch in the back uh, where people were tending to sit and, and play with their kids. We also have picnic tables. So um, I, I would like, uh, if you would trust, that we will actually do our best um, to meet or exceed uh, the requirements. Um, it is, well, as, as you know, I do live there. It is important to me what my neighborhood looks like and uh, how things are completed. So it's not that we don't want to, don't want to meet that. Um, the other piece of it, um, obviously uh, professionals uh, charge a certain amount. Um, if you do require those securities that will literally take the money away that I have available to do the work. So um, that, you know, would make it uh, extremely difficult uh, to be able to follow through this year. Um, so I'd like you to take that into consideration. Um, and one more piece that uh, was brought up was the four uh, trees, well, it wasn't specifically talked about, but the four trees that are not on the boulevard, the four uh, Colorado spruce. Those have already been planted and I planted them myself so it, it wasn't done professionally. Uh, however, I am committed to keeping those there and uh, maintaining their health. If, if for some reason they don't thrive, I, I would happily replace them with a professionally planted tree. But at this point in time, and unless there's a problem with them, I, I'd rather not 
dig out perfectly good trees and then spend another $500 on each new tree. So um, I think I think that's all I had to share. If, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Any questions for the delegation? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given, and thanks for coming in again, uh, Mr. Cameron. Uh, maybe we can wait a year or something after this, I'm not sure. Um, uh, my, my question is just around uh, the new alternative plan. So there's that strip for the community garden that, that's there. Is that just going to be a flat piece of ground uh, that'll just be dirt or grass until it becomes a community garden, or is it going to be bordered um, and uh, like a raised flower bed? Or uh, Mayor Given, Councillor Thiessen, our, our intention would be to have a number of uh, raised uh, garden areas. Um, so right now it's uh, hard packed uh, gravel and unless you designated something different I think that's appropriate for us to uh, build our raised uh, gardens on. Um, we've talked to a few uh, groups about providing the materials and, and I would hope it uh, would become sort of a a community effort within the building to sort of construct them. Um, I also uh, spoken to some people about providing um, sort of a protective fencing to, you know, stop people from uh, going through there or um, um, disrupting disrupting the gardens. So, uh, but at this point in time, I I picture you know a couple of feet off the ground so it's easy to access them, as well as a number of them. Um, so that you can easily reach into the areas that you would be gardening. So, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, just one more question, if I, I may. Um, you mentioned uh, that if you had to pay the securities, it might impede your ability to get the curbing and the landscaping done. Uh, you also alluded to the fact that you have monies available to do the curbing and the landscaping right now. Uh, I guess that you would otherwise be paying the securities towards. Um, so I, I actually quite some time ago paid a deposit to the contractor and that's still in place. However, that deposit's only about half of what um, you guys have come up with as a cost. Um, I do think that I can do it more economically, uh, still using professional tree planters and having uh, Lindsay Juniper come and supervise that. Um, but the rest of it, I, I do feel I can do it a, at a lower cost. and. I literally moved all the rocks, the larger rocks, into uh, the Cairn area myself. So uh, for the other portion of the Cairn, and I would be planning to do a similar, similar thing. So um, unfortunately, some of some of the choices, uh, such as the poured curbing, rather rather than the um, the curbs that you can purchase and put in, they are the more expensive options. Um, I recognize why you've chosen them, um, but in in some ways, uh, I'm more concerned about housing people than a parking lot. So I will absolutely do my best to meet your requirements. Um, but I, I am unable to do that financially if you require the securities. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, thanks again for coming, Brad, and for working through this with us. Uh, you mentioned that you had, uh, and I guess this is, would be on the 102nd Street side of the building, that you've got the, the rocks and the trees in there, and it looks really nice, and that you exceeded some expectations, and uh, you alluded to that perhaps buying some goodwill into waiving securities. Um, I would suggest that some of that goodwill has eroded a bit in the time that it's taken to get this completed. Um, so my question for you is, if we were to waive securities, but in exchange require that all the work be done this year, would you be able to meet that? No. And also, I, I know it's a fine point, but this additional parking lot was um, something that the city has imposed in 2015, 2016, after the entire building was completed. There was no advanced plan to this. 
And before that, other city employees added over $900,000 to the cost of the project. So we're at a total of 1.5 million or more that the city has um, added to the project. So um, I understand that you feel uh, frustrated that I maybe haven't met some of those criteria, uh, but when you look at the amount of money that I've had to spend to meet requirements that I believe were unnecessary. Uh, I find that very frustrating. Um, as it turns out, the city has not actually put any city money into the project. Um, I feel as though the city should uh, feel very committed towards affordable housing and in a certain sense put their money where their mouth is. Um, and in this case, I, I would gladly have the city step in and finish it to their requirements if they would like to. Um, just to be clear, it's not necessarily my frustration, but I am listening to your neighbours and hearing their frustration and the delay of getting the landscaping done. Um, and, and that's important. So I, I recognize the 1.5 million or more that was added that um, uh, fairly or, or unfairly as, as um, may be the case. Um, what was the total value then of the project? Um, right now it's valued at 14 million. Um, at the time it was about a 10,000 or a $10 million construction cost and a 1 million land value. Um, on our own, we looked at the potential of maybe adding additional parking or maybe adding a development uh, behind the cairn. And it was at that point in time the city required the additional parking. So at no point in time was, was there a plan um, in place. And I understand that the neighbours may be a little bit frustrated. Um, but again, I, I don't see that frustration um, being equal to one and a half million dollars of frustration or the homes of 140 people that otherwise wouldn't have somewhere to live. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Platt. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I guess my, I, just to kind of expand on uh, Councillor Friesen's thought there, um, I guess my concern with that would be, Brad, is if, if, you, if you can't put up the securities um, now, and be able to do it, then how are you going to be able to do it in a year? If, if we didn't waive securities today, how are you actually going to go ahead with finishing this? Because if if you have to put up securities and finish it, it's going to cost a lot more money to do that um, than to waive all the securities and just get it done this year. So I'm just kind of curious of how how you're going to be able to finish this at all uh, to that degree. Uh, so Mayor Given, Councillor Plot. Um, at this point in time, I feel very confident that I can finish the landscaping uh, through sort of my personal work as well as uh, the people that I have supporting me. Um, the hard servicing of the um, parking lot, I actually have uh, no plan or no way to do that at this point in time. Um, in fact, our mortgage payment is going up $6,000 this month over what it's been for the last three years. So. Um, yeah, so I actually have have no answer for you at this point in time, other than I have a whole year to figure it out. Fair enough. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mr. Cameron. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Any other questions for the delegation? Okay. Seeing none. Thanks very much, Mr. Cameron. Thanks for being here this evening. Is there anybody else that wish to speak to development permit PL one six zero two five two? Is there anybody else that wish to speak to this development permit? Seeing nobody coming forward, uh, then I would look to council uh, for a motion. Councillor Platt. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I guess we've got a few to make, so I'll start off with one of them. I'm hoping that uh, uh, to make a motion that we amend to the, the alternative site plan that was presented today. I'm, I like the plan. It sounds like uh, administration's fine with the plan. But we'd have to amend it to 67 stalls and to go with the alternate plan. Okay, that motion be in order, and that's probably the appropriate way to do that. Was if there's any sort of changes, then we'll deal with them first, and then to approve the development permit as amended. Uh, any discussion or debate on Councillor Plot's motion with respect to the alternate site plan? Any discussion or debate? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. 
Thank you. That motion carries. Okay. Uh, any other motions arising? Any other amendments um, to the development permit? Councillor Plot. Um, I, I can really empathize with, uh, with Brad on there, Mr. Cameron, on this one. I, I, I'm a little concerned that we, I know as a, as a council, we'd like to see this project just get done. So I was really hoping that uh, Councillor Friesen uh, threw out her idea that that would be receptive. Um, but in light that it doesn't sound like that is, I, I would like to try a motion that we would, uh, that we wouldn't um, collect any um, securities for the project, but that it has to stay on the timelines that we had set in the original or, or no, it's probably the, the timelines that we had set within the development permit. So, the, so um, your motion isn't intending to vary the timelines in the development permit that's in front of council. Um, it's to waive the uh, levies, or sorry, the, the the securities. Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, just so we clarify, that's certainly within council's jurisdiction. Any discussion or debate on that motion, Councillor Thiessen? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'm going to speak in support of uh, Councillor Platt's motion. Um, for me, affordable housing is very important, and maintaining affordability for the owners who are willing to take the risk to, to undertake it is good. I also like the uh, fact that um, uh, that we're keeping it to the timelines. Um, I think uh, part of what we've already done is we've given a $250 fine, um, and I've wrestled with myself on this one. I don't see the need to have the securities, but I would like to maintain those timelines. And now that we've administered the first fine, um, there's a potential that if uh, there's an opportunity for the developer to, to generate some more goodwill and start moving goodwill back into the direction of the city, city hall, uh, of the neighbors, and by undertaking the landscaping requirements, I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, if the developer is unable to to meet our timeline, so a uh, council, I believe it's in our authority to administer any type of fine uh, within our land use bylaw, and that may be a way to, uh, I guess, incent the uh, developer to uh, maybe stick to our timelines and uh, generate some goodwill in the community, and hopefully we can get this thing done and everyone in the Cairn area can be happy neighbors administration with the city of Grand Prairie, the developer, and we can get something that we truly want and still be housing people and not be bankrupting anybody. So I'm in support of the motion. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. May I hear the motion again, please? Sure. Um, the second motion with respect to the waiver of, uh, of securities. I, I'm sorry, I thought I heard some reference to the timelines. Yeah, so just in discussion, so uh, Councillor Plot wasn't intending to amend the timelines as outlined in the development permit. The motion was to, uh, for waiver of the securities. So we'll be talking about the timelines separately, is that it? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the recommendation from administration is to extend some di some deadlines and I'm, I'm hoping we'll have the opportunity to look at that. The original permit requires it, the deadlines to be, I've lost track. <laughs> so maybe maybe I'll just, just, just so that we're 100% all on the same page, maybe I'll look to Mr. Ellis uh, to review what the timelines uh, are proposed in the development permit that's up for approval tonight. So if council took no action to amend the timelines with respect to completion, what would that say? Through Mayor Given, the uh, landscaping and the poured curbing would be required by July 31st of 2018, and the paving or hard surfacing and line painting would be required by July 31st, 2019. So that's what the development permit that's in front of us for approval currently says? Correct. Thank you. That's the clarification I needed. Um, I would like to speak in favor of the motion. Uh, I do believe that if we end up with a concern that the work is not completed um, as per our expectations, uh, the information that we're going to garner regarding um, um, enforcement may allow us to deal with uh, any deficiencies at a later date. And so waiving the, uh, uh, the securities, I believe, would uh, help to facilitate getting this job completed. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Blackburn. 
Um, I'll just uh, note that I'm in support of the motion uh, to waive the uh, um, waive the uh, securities. I think it's in uh, alignment with uh, Council Policy 607, which allows for uh, affordable housing projects to submit an application to do such a thing. Uh, that's fully within Council's authority. And as Mr. Cameron noted, that actually happened during the construction of the facility itself. And so uh, had the landscaping securities been required at the time of construction, I think they would have been waived anyhow. So I think this is consistent with the uh, standing city policy and, and the approach that we've taken on this property in the past. Uh, is there any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, are there any other motions arising? Are there are any other amendments arising? Uh, and if there are not, then we would need a motion to approve uh, development permit PL160252 as amended. Councillor Thiessen? So moved as amended, Mayor Given. Okay, so motion to approve that development permit. Any discussion or debate? Councilor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I just, the, the sentiment is already shared, but I didn't get to get in on the past discussion. So I just, I'm gonna be voting in favor of this. And I'm glad that we're working with the developers to look at this amended plan. I'm glad we're waived securities. I just hope that my view is that when these deadlines do come, I hope we also take a really hard line. I'm excited to learn about enforcement orders. That I think that's mostly the most likely mechanism for us, but. I think it's, we, we've worked and I'm happy that we have worked. Now let's make sure that this happens if this comes before us again. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, thanks, Councillor Bressy. I don't see anybody else in the queue, Council. Uh, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, I think that handles all of our business related to this development permit. And we can move on into our community, uh, committee business. Councillor Thiessen, I think you're first up with our Community Living Committee meeting, all right? Looks that way, Mayor Given. I would move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held Tuesday, March 27, 2018, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Any errors or omissions? Anything we've got to change before we adopt it? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. So uh, thank you, Mayor Given. We had uh, one uh, one uh, motion coming out of uh, the Living Committee meeting uh, on the Community Opioid Response Tax Force, and that is uh, uh, move, I'm moving that uh, Council approve the terms of reference for the Community Opioid Response Task Force and further endorse the administration resources as indicated. Uh, if you didn't uh, read your minutes uh, from this meeting, uh, the administration resources as indicated is pertaining to one community social development, uh, administrative staff, and then uh, admin staff to help uh, with the work that would be involved along the, the opioid task force. Thanks very much, Councilor Thiessen. And just, uh, just to, for further clarity, this is identifying the fact that those are the in-house existing resources uh, and that this work would make up uh, uh, an addition to their existing work. So there are essentially no additional resources. Uh, this is just the city specifying that, that that level of support would be provided on an ongoing basis through existing in-house sources. Uh, Councilor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I, did, I actually want to acknowledge you before we vote on this. I'm going to definitely be voting in favor of this, and I'm grateful to the mayor for striking this task force as we're talking about social issues in our community and initiatives. There's always talk about funding, and my sense is that we're doing a pretty good job of funding things, but we as a, as a city could be doing a lot better job taking leadership and taking an organizational role in our community, and this is one area where we're stepping into that with this, so I'm grateful for that, and I just want to acknowledge that this is a good direction for our city to be going. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy, and I, uh, on, on that acknowledgement, I'd also like to say that the City of Grand Prairie uh, and myself were really uh, honestly late to this game. Um, I think that there are a lot of community agencies and uh, individuals in the community who were uh, in the game and feeling the effects firsthand well before the City of Grand Prairie formally became involved. Um, having said that, it's never too late to start, and so thanks for the kind words, but uh, I think the credit really goes to the people that brought this to the attention of the community and to council uh, and made it a, a, an issue that the City of Grand Prairie had to get involved in, so thanks very much. Um, any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. <laughs> you that motion carries 
Councillor Thiessen, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Yeah, we had uh, three delegations come in, uh, largely from the uh, arts district of our of our great community. Uh, we had uh, Grand Prairie uh, Live Theatre come in with a presentation, the Grand Prairie Art Gallery, as well as the Grand Prairie International Street Performers presentation. It was a world-class uh, round of delegations at Community Living that day. We also received a letter of correspondence from the Catholic School Board asking us uh, if we would entertain the thought of providing a service site uh, for their Kensington area, of which uh, committee decided that uh, we would we would move the I guess the uh, the point of having a service site or providing a service site for the Catholic School Board to the appropriate standing committee, which most likely will land on IPS and somewhere in between with community living. But that is all. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, I think that takes us to our corporate services committee meeting, and I think Councillor Plot, you're going to step in for uh, Councillor O'Toole, who's away this evening. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I'd make a recommendation that Council receive the minutes from the Corporate Services meeting held uh, Tuesday, March 27th, 2018, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Pallott. Are there any errors or omissions, anything that we need to correct before we adopt those? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Pallott. And we did have a couple of recommendations come out of our... Uh, our meeting and so the first one was that uh, council approved the destruction of all the records listed in the schedule attached day that was in our packages um, to be destroyed and properly listed and incorporated into the minutes of council along with a, a signed affidavit as a witness of the destruction so this is uh, that's the, the motion I guess this is basically uh, from what I understand a housekeeping item that we do annually um, so it's just something we need to look after doing thanks very much Councillor Plot. any uh, discussion or debate on the motion Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Pilat. Um, we did also have another one that was a supplementary assessment bylaw, um, uh, C1378. And so this is a bylaw um, that provides authorization for the city to assess properties having newly constructed buildings or major additions during the year. Um, it's one of those ones I tease as a builder that I'm not a big fan of, but I totally understand that the relevance for it, watching uh, facilities like Canadian Tire being built this year. Um, so uh, I would rec make a recommendation that we would uh, give first reading to bylaw C1378, being the 2018 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Plot. So motion for first reading. We don't have uh, any uh, debate on first reading. I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Just make sure your vote's registered there, Council. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Plot. hopefully you've got a glass of water over there. I see you've got a water jug close by. You've got a yep. lot of readings to do. Um, I'd uh, make a motion that we give second reading to bylaw C-1378. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Councillor Friesen, did you have uh, some discussion debate? Councillor Friesen. Uh, thank you. I just saw that there is a discrepancy between uh, what we're, we are... Um, moving and what the bylaw number actually is we're moving for 1378 but we have 1379 sure well we actually so this it, is uh we have 1379 will follow um this first bylaw is one that allows the city to do the assessments and then the second one is uh 1379 is the bylaw that allows us to actually Oh, I just jumped forward. I'm sorry. Thank you. Assessments. Yeah, I just jumped forward. Sorry. No, it, this is one of those ones where we have uh, a couple of layers of bylaws to do one thing. Um, but no, so it's, uh, it's easy to get crossed up on that. Any other? <laughs> Councillor Fallot, say thanks for the break from having to do motions. Uh, is there any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I will call for the vote on second reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Plot. And you just have to make sure your microphone. Thanks, Mayor Griffin. Um, so I would uh, make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw C 1379 at this meeting, or 1378 at Oh, see, she got you confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even play that on Councillor Friesen. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi mind trick me. 1378 at this meeting, please. Uh, thanks for a Jedi mind trick. Did I hear? This is not the bylaw you're looking for? Okay. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Councillor Flott. So this is a motion to have third and final reading here tonight. If this motion doesn't pass unanimously, then third and final reading would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Uh, is there any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading here tonight? 
Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. We can have third and final reading, Councillor right. Blood. Thanks, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully wrap this one up. I'll uh, make a motion that we give third reading to bylaw C 1378, being the 2018 supplementary assessment bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Flott. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I think something worth pointing out from the committee discussion on this is this is a bylaw that's been passed in essentially its form for decades now, and it gives us permission to charge taxes both when a building is complete or when it's occupied. And the practice of our administration is to to when it's occupied, which is a bit of a break that they give people who build new buildings. It's giving them a break for a month or two until they're actually getting use out of the building. And it's worth highlighting because sometimes we get beat up on and people say, well, why don't you, why don't you make things easier here? Why don't you help us out? And this is a really tangible example that I wanted to highlight of we're giving developers a break as they're doing this. Thanks very much, Councilor Ressi. Thanks for highlighting that. Um, any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Pilat, you've got another another set to go through. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, so, as mentioned earlier, uh, because we're making this bylaw change, we uh, we need to also, uh, according to the MGA, um, make a, a second bylaw change. So that this next one is uh, the city giving a first reading to bylaw C thirteen seventy nine, um, being the two thousand eighteen supplementary tax bylaw. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Platt. Um, no discussion or debate on first reading, so I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Platt. All right. Uh, I will make a motion that we give second reading to bylaw C1379. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Seeing nobody in the queue, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. You. That motion carries. All right, we'll we'll keep her going here. We'll uh, make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw 1379 at this meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Um, any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading? As with the previous bylaw, this motion to have third and final reading must pass unanimously. If it doesn't, uh, the final reading would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Uh, is there any discussion or debate on having third and final reading? Seeing. None, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. We can have third and final reading. All right, perfect. So I will make a motion that we give third reading to bylaw C1379 being the 2018 supplementary tax bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Uh, any discussion or debate? This is your last opportunity on this set of bylaws and nobody's gonna take it. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, thanks very much for stepping in there, Councillor Pallott. Was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes or that committee meeting? Uh, yeah, there was a couple things. We did have uh, CABC Wood Gundy come and present to committee uh, to let us know kind of our portfolio. And so we did receive that to report for information and it was a, a good presentation. And there was also some conversation about, uh, I guess our election review and uh, so there was some some conversation about that and I'm sure further conversation will be coming uh, forward to the committee later today. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll move on to 9.3 the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee and uh, Councillor Blackburn I think you're going to handle that one for us is that correct? Yes thank you Mayor Gibbon. Uh, first I'd like uh, to move that Council receive the minutes of the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting held Tuesday April 3rd 2018 as presented. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Blackburn, are there any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt that set of minutes? Again, seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Plot, did you have something? I just, yeah, I, I didn't have a chance to attend it, but I did see we had a presentation there from Uber, and I'm just wondering if we're going to have, uh, at some point, maybe a little bit more robust conversation about Uber options, which could potentially impact cabs, transit, and, and a lot of other things. I'm not sure what the forum would need to bring that up at some point. Sure. So uh, 
Uh, we have one motion arising uh, that's not related to that topic, and so we'll make sure that we do that. Um, but uh, council members can obviously uh, raise any issue that they'd like uh, for any standing committee. That's a regular practice that we have. But the context of that letter was uh, input into the city's transportation master plan in terms of trends and things that we may need to watch. Um, but if council members wanted to add something to a regular committee agenda, that would be, uh, we all have that authority and that ability. Okay. Uh, Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my wording here. I'd like to um, thank you. Have uh, moved that council approve the request to extend the period of the subdivision endorsement of Z14-0038 to February 23 of 2019. And uh, speaking to that, uh, the request is uh, due to uh, continued pressure on market and conditions, um, making uh, for limited demand for the product and thereby uh, uh, making the, the project uneconomical uh, at this time. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor Thiessen. Uh, just a comment. Um, uh, I'm going to vote in support of this, but uh, I, I, I'm i getting a feeling that we're getting really, really close to a time where we may be adding a huge or a smaller section of a population to our community. And, and although economic uh, conditions at this time don't really say that a developer should start building a house, Right now, I'm I'm concerned that we keep delaying it, that when we get an influx of people coming, migrating here for job opportunities to the opening of the new hospital or whatnot, or other um, gas plants that are being built in and around the region, that uh, we're actually going to get into a position where the development community is rushing uh, to put houses up as fast as they can and, and slapstick it together. So uh, just a bit of caution for, for council. Um, these requests come fairly frequently, but um, I think we should maybe start asking the developers the question, what would you do if tomorrow you know, we needed 1,000 new houses? Do we, A, have that inventory, or B, are we starting that, and will that be available and ready for for our new residents that will be moving into the Grand Prairie region. Uh, I get concerned every time we start shutting down these subdivisions and uh, usually when we boom fast and bust, it puts the pressure on us and our council and our administration to sort of flex the rules a bit and it doesn't always go in the council's favor or in the city's favor. So just a word of caution, um, if we see any more of these in the future, maybe we should ask some tougher questions of our developers who are asking for these time extensions. Thanks, Councilor Thiessen. Councilor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, that, that's a fair concern. I think the development community, though, is, uh, I mean, they want to sell their stuff when they get their stuff uh, to market, for sure. Um, and I know that uh, Councillor Platt can probably speak even more clearly to this than I can. But um, I just think, you know, if we say we have to go ahead with these now and we're not granting time extensions, we may lose that developer. And I do think that uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And if we can hang on to a developer who's willing to do it for another year, that's probably a fair trade-off. So I'll be uh, certainly supporting this motion. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Platt. Um, I will also be supporting the motion. Um, and, and to speak to Councillor Thiessen's uh, concerns, I, I think you have very legitimate concerns. Um, currently, though, I would say that we have about four years of supply of what has been selling in the last 24 months. So I think it's a lot to ask industry to be so far ahead of the curve as well. And, you know, unfortunately, we live in an area where our, our markets uh, ebb and flow and we don't have a lot of control over it. The scary part of forcing a developer to go ahead and put something more in the ground, um, obviously, it's going to have a huge impact on our bottom line. But if we flood the market with even more inventory, we're actually going to hurt pricing. So it's not necessarily a good thing for all the homeowners in Grand Prairie if we watch prices drop substantially because we flooded the market with too much product too. So I know there's a slippery slope there, but we can run a real risk as a community if we decide to flood the market with too much inventory and we watch house prices drop by 10%, we'd have a lot of people underwater on their mortgages. So it's a delicate balance for sure. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Councillor Bressy. On the other hand, I hope that this is a conversation we have more in depth and we have it soon because it's a need. And I, uh, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think there's in, there's inventory for single detached in some of those units. I don't know if there's a lot of a uh, lot of inventory right now for multifamily units, especially larger developments. And I would and I don't think that carries the same risks of flooding the market 
And I think it is something that we need to be putting thought into. I don't know how appropriate it is for the municipality to be meddling with the market and encouraging the market, but it's definitely a conversation we need to be having. So I'm glad that it got brought up today. Thanks, Councilor Bressy. And, and uh, I wouldn't disagree with actually any of the comments on either side of that. I would just sort of... Um, uh, refocus council to the, the motion in front of us is uh, for a subdivision uh, time extension request. Um, this is essentially a request uh, from the landowner to have an extension in the amount of time before their approved subdivision um, sort of disappears. Um, the consequence of not doing, not providing this uh, would not necessarily be so much on impact on the uh, available housing stock, um, but it would be on the sort of additional costs to the development community to restart that when they wish to go ahead. And so actually, in a way, uh, you could see this as providing additional flexibility that allows the development community to move sooner when the market corrects, um, rather than having to be in a position where they'd have to go back and recirculate, replan, and have additional cost and time before these lots are on. Um, if they decide the next year that they want to move forward with subdivision, they can do it sooner because they have this request, or this extension approved. If they didn't, they'd have to start from square one, in essence. Um, so that's, so in a, in a way, we're kind of meeting, uh, providing some additional flexibility that allow, allows the market to be better positioned to respond sooner. Um, any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, Councillor Blackburn, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Yes, just a couple of things. Um, first, uh, the committee received the uh, letter from the Minister of Municipal Affairs that awarded the grant to support uh, the city's intermunicipal development plan and intermunicipal collaboration framework project, the one that's that involves the uh, the other communities that we've been working with. So it was good to see that um, that uh, grant approved. Uh, the the one other thing that I will mention is that. Um, um, we received a report on um, the cannabis process that we're, uh, we're undergoing at the moment. And uh, administration uh, proposed to have all of the bylaw amendments uh, presented to council uh, on the uh, May 22nd council meeting. So just an indication that things are moving forward. The, the administration uh, for the city has done some very good work towards covering all the bases and making sure that we approach this from uh, from the right perspective. Okay. And uh, that that's about it as far as highlights. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn, and thanks for stepping in to handle that set of minutes and uh, the recommendations. Uh, I think that handles all of our committee business, uh, unless there was something that we missed. Um, we have no items of correspondence this evening, um, and so that would bring us to our delegation business. So we had two delegations, uh, Mr. McDonald first presenting with respect to uh, um, supervised consumption site. Um, I would look for a motion to receive that presentation for information. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. I would move that we receive that uh, for information. Thanks very much. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, and then our second presentation um, was with respect to parking on 106th Avenue um, and other related matters, other matters. Um, can I have a motion to receive that presentation for information? Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I guess I'll do it again. So moved uh, for information in all parts. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, and as I committed to, I will uh, work with administration to get a better understanding of the parking permit situation as related to the apartment building, and I'll uh, respond back to the, the resident directly. Um, I don't see anybody with any discussion or debate on that motion, so I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, I don't believe we have any notices of motion this evening, and so that'll take us to council member reports. And I think we only have one this evening. Councillor Friesen, you had Disabled Transportation Society. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, so they did have a board meeting in the last couple of weeks, and they um, brought into place a couple of new members onto the board, which gives us a very strong transition board for the next several months. 
in light of that transition board being in place, the AGM has been deferred to September. It would have ordinarily been in the spring, but it'll be deferred to September to give this board a chance to get its feet uh, under it. And there will also be an executive director posting coming up shortly so that they uh, get a good manager in place. So uh, things are moving along nicely there. Thank you. Thanks very much for the update, Councillor Friesen. Uh, were there any other reports from our external agencies, boards, and commissions? Seeing none, then uh, we'll go to Councilmember Roundtable and we'll start with Councillor Bressy. Well, thank you, Mayor Given. I decided to visit a city facility last week and play Ultimate City in our leisure centre, and I took a hard collision and consequently spent a lot of the last week flat on my back. So I took the opportunity to catch up on a bunch of periodicals and one that we get a stack of is Municipal World, which I'd never really taken too big of a glance at, but I read a whole bunch of back issues. And I think the one article really stuck out to me for our council, and it's uh, regular. There's a fellow named George Cuff, I believe, who always talks about governance. And yes, the February one especially popped out for me, especially given the conversation we just had around the subdivision uh, uh, time extension request where he pointed out that quite often we talk about these little nigg niggling issues around a council table and we get folks on the agenda and we don't take too much time to talk about the bigger strategic issues. And I'm looking forward to us getting a strategic issues committee going, but I also hope we can have more of those bigger conversations around this table right here. I was also excited talking about subdivision development appeals. I talked to our city manager asking why do we always have these come to council? And I understand that administration is under a review of what comes to council and what doesn't. They hope that we're very supportive of getting a lot of these routine matters off of the out of this room and out of this time slot so we can start talking about the big issues in the city. So I'd encourage you guys all to read Muni World if you haven't read a bunch of the back <laughs> issues yet. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. I'm glad to see that you're catching up with George Cuff, um, uh, a well-known name in municipal politics across across the country, absolutely. Um, Councilor Minhas. Oh, sorry, Councilor Minhas, I turned off your mic there. My apologies. There you go. There you are. Thank you, Bill, <coughs> Bill Given, Mayor Bill Given. I appreciate I had a chance to go to Red Deer for National Small Center Settlement and Integration Conference for the Local Immigration Partnership. And that was a great opportunity for me to learn a lot of stuff. Because of when I came to Canada, there was totally different thing because I became immigrant in 74. Came to the small city. This is the motto was this national central settlement for the small city to get more promoted than the large city, which is uh, all the immigrant come and stay there into the large city. The purpose was the main purpose, purpose was to this conference was to provide the form and input into the next IRSCC call for proposal to priority and guidance from the small center pers perspective. So the topic was there a refugee initial settlement and ongoing support, language support, assessment information training, employment folks, employment support, Canadian career planning and uh, monitoring, youth and child and support, child care, health care, mental care crisis, uh, francophone services, community partnership program and service delivery, organization leadership, data collecting and reporting to organization leadership. The conclusion for this conference, the result came out to creating the document and highlighted small center communities to highest priority to call proposal C CF CFP 2019. Each program area, language, training, employment, support, service and information community concerning needed and settlement. At the same time, the conference created unique opportunity to share the best protect practice of the other. The best thing I learned was it's people were for all Canada. There was over 250 people show up in the small, uh, less than 150,000 population. Actually, less than 100, but there was only one or two people were from 150. It's learning like how people come to the big city and they try to settle, but they don't move to the small city. And this is the opportunity, the government, federal government putting a lot, 
learning curve and educating the people to move the small city where the unemployment is less and they need the people to do the job. So it's opened my eyes, you know, because when I came here, it was totally different situation, I tell you again. So that's all I was there Excellent. three days. So that was great. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Minas. Uh, Councillor Friesen. Thank you. Um, so March 28th and 29th, I actually was in Calgary and I attended uh, with the Ministry of Community and Social Services Truth and Reconciliation Training and it was really quite fascinating to me. I've heard a number of stories about the um, experiences of residential schools and on the reserves and that, and that sort of thing and um, this just... Uh, um, brought it forward again in even a more meaningful way, understanding the the similarities and differences between what they what's experienced in uh, um, Treaty Seven land, which is where I went. We heard from Blackfoot members and Treaty Eight, of course, where uh, where we live. And it was interesting that um, it's I, I kind of in my mind thought it was different challenges with the reserves down there, but it it really isn't. It's really very similar to up here. And uh, that just reinforced for me how that common experience for our Aboriginal friends has uh, um, really brought them to where they are and, and where we are as a society now. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful to be able to attend that in another region. Um, and I also attended today on a very happy note, the Summer Games barbecue fundraiser at lunch. And I happened to sit with two uh, senior citizens who, one of whom was new to Grand Prairie, she's been here about two years, and this, they signed up to volunteer for the Summer Games, and this is the first time either of them has ever volunteered in Grand Prairie, and I just thought that that was fantastic, that the Summer Games would bring these women out uh, for that. I also heard that the fundraising was going really well, so I was pleased to be there today, and over the weekend, my cousin contacted me and said, have you got a spare bed? Her daughter made uh, a basketball team that'll be up uh, competing in the Summer Games, so uh, uh, that was the first um, of, I'm sure, a few bed requests we'll get uh, over the coming months. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Plott. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, I didn't have a very eventful two weeks for council. I left after the last council meeting for a family holiday, so we were we were away from to Palm Springs, Anaheim, and uh, San, Fran uh, San Diego. But I did notice in my trek I wasn't as motivated as Councillor Bressley reading a bunch of back stories. Um, but I did notice a lot of about the transportation systems that, that I went through in each city and and literally how Uber is taking over down there. And it's not something I've ever used, um, but it's something I'm definitely more curious about now than I've ever been before. Uh, watched empty transit buses and lots of cabs not being utilized there as well. So uh, it's it's a it's a it's a concern everywhere, I guess. And the market is shifting with that. Also dreamt about what it would live like in a city that didn't have uh, dirty streets and a robust downtown and just some, some challenges that we have as a community that just other challenges that other cities just don't have. And so we have to think outside the box here a lot more than a lot of other municipalities, which I do love about the entrepreneurial uh, community that we have in Grand Prairie for that. And it made me really respect of what the opportunities we have in Grand Prairie and speaking with a lot of locals down there. Um, the opportunities in a lot of municipalities just aren't as good as they are in Grand Prairie. And so it made me very grateful to be where I was from. So it was a good trip. Thanks very much, Councillor Flott. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, two things I'll mention. One is that I had the pleasure uh, at the end of March to attend the reception for the uh, Alberta, uh, the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Alberta, commonly known as APEGA. And it was great to see eight members of our community uh, inducted into membership, um, and uh, one of them being our former councillor, Dan Wong. And uh, it was, it's just great to see this professional community growing. Uh, the second one I'll mention very briefly is that uh, I was invited to take a, um, a personalized tour of the Creative Arts Center. And I was amazed to see the number of different programs that are offered there and the numbers of people who take advantage of those programs. Um, the facilities that they have in terms of uh, um, uh, art supplies, pottery supplies and machinery, all kinds of great things. Uh, I had no idea it was there and uh, uh, 
So it's, um, it's good to see again that dimension of, of our community. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Councillor Thiessen. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, I, I wanted to say something last council meeting. I had to put it off, so I'm, I'm going to just sort of lump a bunch of things in. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, forming the opioid task force that we're coming a little bit late to the table. Well, I used to work in mental health, and uh, when it comes to naloxone training, I'm way behind on, on actually knowing how to administer it. So on March 19th, I took part in community social developments, uh, like naloxone training session, uh, which we had 20 members of the community from different service organizations there. Uh, I learned how to administer the naloxone, fill it, and put it in there. I know, Mayor Given, you've done that yourself and other councillors too in the past, but I have not yet undertaken that. I took an extra kit and I gave it to a friend who's trying to help a family member who is a recovering opioid addict, and just in case that person falls off the rails, like he is now prepared to do the same thing, and I gave him what I learned, so hopefully I was a good teacher. Um, uh, also, uh, along those lines, what I wanted to announce last week uh, is that uh, on March 25th, we were awarded a provincial grant uh, in, in regards to opioids uh, as a provincial opioid public awareness grant. Uh, our director, Koji Miyagi of Community Living, had uh, given us an update. Uh, it wasn't announced officially by the province until uh, last week, uh, but it was a $75,000 grant that's to be used for education and awareness on opioids through digital storytelling. So this is an outside-the-box way that we're, the city of Grand Prairie is reaching out to try to uh, tell people's stories, uh, family members who have suffered through a person with an opioid addiction or an opioid addict who is trying to recover or still not there yet. Uh, hopefully this will be a good tool that will open the eyes to the members of our community who might take a hardline stance against anybody who might be using any type of opioid in their life to cope with whatever it is they need. Uh, also uh, on last Friday I, I took part in training for the point in time count which is happening this week as well. Um, so I'll be one of the surveyors uh, going up and down the streets largely in central Grand Prairie or downtown core uh, to uh, essentially do a census and see where our people are at, how many people are homeless, couch surfing, or otherwise. Um, I'd like to extend the invitation for anyone who wants to volunteer. Unfortunately, you need to take part in the training in order to, to do that, but I'm sure if you call Community Social Development or Terry Sudnick, they may be able to find a spot for you if on Wednesday you have nothing better to do during the evening. Uh, there's free pizza here and some juice and snacks as well. Um, <clears throat> finally, um, on a personal note, uh, over the uh, Easter long weekend, uh, I know right now we just witnessed the World Championships of Curling in Beaver Lodge Zone. Jeff Walker um, do fairly well for Canada. Uh, we have another opportunity come November 5th for Grand Prairie to get uh, their name on the national stage one more time uh, as the Kurt Balderston rink uh, won the Mixed Curling Provincial Championships uh, down in Southern Alberta, uh, which means that they will be representing Alberta uh, at the Mixed Curling National Championships in Winnipeg, Manitoba at Fort Rouge from November 5th to 10th. And I only mention it because, uh, uh, well, I'm just a proud uncle. My niece, Janae DeJong, is playing on that team as the third, and uh, and it's a fully Grand Prairie and area rink. So uh, get your cheer on and uh, prepare for the opening of curling season, which will start with hopefully a national championship win for the curling rink of Balderston from Grand Prairie. Thanks very much, Councillor Heeson, and certainly we'll cheer them on as they go. Uh, did you just say the opening of curling season? That's depressing. We haven't even gotten rid of the snow from last winter. <laughs> Man. Uh, thanks very much. Well, so I'll just cover a few uh, brief events that haven't been covered by the council members. Uh, I attended with a number of other council members. Uh, the meeting with the Grand Prairie Public School District uh, uh, Board of Trustees uh, with respect to long-term planning for the uh, existing Compton High School site uh, as they embark on the development of the new high school. Um, I also attended uh, at the citywide Good Friday service. Uh, it was held at Revolution Place this year. It was previously at um, uh, Evergreen Park at uh, the Tech Center. Um, it was great to see it inside the city and uh, great attendance uh, at the event and uh, congratulations to all the churches who organized that uh, event um, uh, annually. 
Uh, on the third, I uh, did a quick flight down to Edmonton for a very, very, very short meeting uh, where I concluded uh, six years of having been on the board of ALERT, the Alberta Law Enforcement Response Team's uh, board of directors. Um, the board over the last year and a half had been working on a governance uh, transformation, I guess, in the organization. And so the board of governor or the board of directors um, formally handed off the duties by appointing new people to the board of directors. Um, the board of directors of Alert is now um, the executive, um, the executive committee of the Alberta Association of Police Government. Or sorry, of police chiefs. So the board of directors of Alert is now the chiefs of police uh, from a number of the different services across the province, including some of the First Nations communities. Um, and uh, the RCMPK division is represented by the. Um, um, Deputy Commissioner uh, for K-Division. Um, so that ended my time on the board. Uh, th at the same time, we also created what is unique in joint... Uh, so ALERT is a joint forces operation where you have um, police from a number of different services working together. Um, and these are common across Canada. ALERT's a little bit unique. And it's gonna, about to get even more unique because um, in our deliberations, we created a... Um, uh, civilian Advisory Committee. Um, and so there isn't a joint forces operation uh, in Canada that has a civilian advisory committee. Uh, so we created that, uh, and we will wait for people to be appointed to that. Um, but I just wanted to bring to Council's attention that I'm finished my time on the Board of Alert um, and uh, know that the organization is in very good hands with the chiefs of police from across the province now being the representatives on that board. Uh, and look to Alert to do good mo more good work in communities across the province like Grand Prairie. Um, and then finally, on uh, Thursday the 5th, a number of members of council and I were out in Hythe to attend the uh, inter-municipal meeting with uh, all the municipalities within the county of Grand Prairie. It was a great opportunity to hear from um, the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association, um, the uh, Grand Prairie Regional College, uh, and to speak about a number of issues that are of common interest and common concern to all the municipalities. And so certainly appreciated the opportunity for all of us to join in with all of our municipal neighbours to just discuss issues that affect our region. And with that, if there wasn't anything else, I'll call our meeting adjourned. Thank you.